Islam is our faith. And the word Islam in its general and literal meaning means submission. It is the absolute and complete and perfect submission to Allah the Almighty. And in its precise technical meaning, it refers to the last or final divine revelations sent down on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in its general meaning, it was addressed in the Qur'an, and it, in its specific meaning, it was also mentioned in the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal says, regarding that general meaning, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ who is better in religion than the one who submits? See, the root of Islam or Islam comes from the root word Aslama. Who is better in religion than the one who submits himself to Allah whilst he is a doer of good? The prophets and messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal were pioneers, set leading examples in fulfilling submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam reached the age of 80 and had no children. Yet he did not despair. He did not give up hope in Allah Azza wa Jal and continued to supplicate Allah, asking Him to grant him a child. And it was. Allah Azza wa Jal granted him Ismail alayhi salam. But then the test of submission came. Allah Azza wa Jal wanted the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was to be purely and completely submitted to him alone. When Ismail grew up and reached an age where he could be of help and assistance to his father and his father's heart was attached to him, naturally, a child at that age, the test came by a command in a form of a dream. And the dreams of prophets and messengers are inspirations and revelations. The command was difficult. The test was severe. It was a challenge to any human's heart except prophets and messengers. قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى He said oh my son I saw in a dream that I slaughter you I sacrifice you So see what you want What you think Immediate submission by Ibrahim He did not think about it He saw it and he immediately went he was firm on fulfilling the instructions of Allah, but he also wanted his son to share that reward of submission with him. So he presented the case to him in the manner mentioned in the Quran. What was the result of the cultivation of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam to Ismail? Another full absolute perfect submission by Ismail. قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرُ O Father, do as you're instructed. Do as you're commanded. سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ You will find me Allah willing. 
a patient one. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ When they both submitted and he put him down or turned him down on his forehead, the test ended. The test ended successfully. Both passed the test with full marks. And the rest of the story is known. When they both submitted, and that's the point important in this story here, they both submitted. Qatada, may Allah have mercy on him, said, the first, Ibrahim, submitted by hastening to fulfill the instruction. And Ismail submitted by surrendering himself to his father, alayhi salam. These stories are endless throughout Islamic history. The companions were no exception in this regard. They practically fulfilled absolute submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of the examples are stunning as to the extent of submission and the speed of reaction. In the book of Abu Dawood, and it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani, one Friday the Prophet وسلم, ascended the mimbar, the pulpit, to deliver the khutbah. And some of the companions were standing up. So he said, Ya ayyuhan nasu jlisu, O people, sit down. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was still coming to the masjid from outside the masjid, had not yet entered the masjid. He heard jlisu, he sat down in the street. Subhanallah. But the, street, the, the masjid did not have walls, as you know. So the Prophet ﷺ saw him. He said, Ya Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, come, O oh Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, enter. Meaning, I was talking to these people who are standing up here. But look at how fast he responded. He submitted to the instruction of the Prophet. ﷺ. Another example is that which is reported by Imam al Bukhari. Aisha radiallahu anha tells us that when the verse of hijab was revealed, she said, Rahim Allahu Nisa al Ansar. May Allah have mercy on the women of Al Ansar. When this verse was revealed, Wal Yadribna bi humuri hinna ala juyubihin. And they should draw their veils or head covers down to their necklines to cover down to their head necklines. She said they immediately cut off parts of their lower garment and placed it on their heads in compliance with the instruction of Allah. Look at the submission. And compare it to some ladies, some Muslims in our times who know the details of the ruling of hijab and yet refrain, refuse to adhere to hijab. Subjecting herself to the wrath and punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal and her guardian, whether he is her father, husband, uncle, brother, whoever he may be, takes full share of that sin. Reluctance in submittance, in submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. The issue
issue of submitting oneself to the commands of Allah was not something that was only on an individual level during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It was a community practice. As a matter of fact, it was one of the practices, one of the features that made that generation, the early believers, the companions radiallahu anhum, it made them distinct. It made them stand out from amongst all generations to follow. In the story of the three companions who stayed behind without any justification or reason not to partake in the battle of Tabuk, and this is reported by Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ instructed the residents of Medina, and I don't mean Al Ansar, I mean all the companions, to desert these three companions who were not hypocrites. See, people who stayed behind in Medina and did not participate in the Ghazwa of Tabuk were two types the hypocrites and these three true believers from the companions. So the Prophet ﷺ instructed people to boycott these three, to desert them, not even to talk to them, including their own wives. So who adhered? Who submitted to this instruction, to this command from the Prophet ﷺ? The entire community of al Madina al munawwar To the extent that Ka'b radiallahu anhu, who is one of the three who stayed behind, said, until we felt that we are in a strange land. Every single person, family, relative, friend, everyone, they greet them with salam and they would not respond. Why? In full submission to the instruction of the Prophet not to talk to them. See, it is a feature that was overwhelming during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And this reflects true faith. See, submission is a test to one's faith, to the truthfulness of his servitude to Allah. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أبين الكمال من الله أبين الشريعة is a manifestation that embodies true submission to Allah What does it mean to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? The two testimonies of faith. What is the essence of these two testimonies of faith? La ilaha illallah, none is worthy of worship except Allah. One and only, I only worship Him. I accept Him. As judge, I accept His instructions. I accept his sharia to rule regarding my life, my family, my wealth, all of my affairs, and I fully submit. And I accept Muhammad as a messenger from his Lord, as a prophet conveying the, the message, the divine message of Allah. And I submit, I accept. And I submit to the instructions and I live my life in compliance with his tradition. However, this is not the case with all the people. Many people throughout history refuse to submit 
unless things coincided with their reasoning. It had to make sense to them before they accepted and submitted. But if you look deep into Sharia, ah, you see that there are many instructions, many commands, many acts of worship. The wisdom and reason behind them are not declared. Take for example, a woman who receives her menses during Ramadan, she is instructed by Sharia, ah, by Allah, to make up the days she could not fast. She is prohibited from fasting. So she is commanded to make up these days. Whilst on the other hand, she's not instructed to make up the prayers. Well, she didn't pray as well. That's Sharia. That's a command from Allah. The reason behind it was not declared. So we hear and we obey. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, had the religion been based on opinion and rationale, reasoning, then when one has to wipe over his socks, he should wipe from the lower part of the foot. That's what you walk on, right? Now that's according to reason. But then he said, but I have seen the Prophet Sallallahu wipe over the upper side of the foot. That's Sharia. Therefore, there is no space for utilizing the mind and reason and rationale. When the instruction comes, regardless of whether or not I understand why it makes sense or not, I must adhere and submit. Why do we pray Dhuhr 4 and Maghrib 3? Why is Fajr 2 and Asr 4? These are instructions. The famous narration in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari, it's a confirmed narration in the authentic book of al-Bukhari. The most authentic book of Sunnah that was accepted as a, an authority by all generations. He reported that the Prophet ﷺ says, if a fly was to drop or fall into your container of food or drink, don't remove it until you dip it. It falls into your container, your bowl of food or drink. Dip it before you take it out. Then he gave the reason. He said, for on one of its wings there is a disease, and on the other wing there is the remedy. Some people so this to be irrational. It didn't make sense. How can we be instructed to dip that disgusting fly into our food and drink and then eat and drink that afterwards? And they rejected the narration based on their brains and reason. But subhanallah, after they fell in their test, and failed in passing it. They stumbled and fell and failed with a zero grade in the test. Modern science came to prove this to be true. So submission is a test to one's faith. This is the essence of Islam. It is not permissible to use our mind to judge Sharia, to reject this command when it doesn't make sense and accept this one when it makes sense. To reject and refuse to accept the command until I know why it was given or what's the wisdom behind it. 
This is not permissible. It is not permissible to make the brain and reason govern Sharia. Ah. Allah gave His brains to use them to understand if we can. But not, not all the time we will. Why? Because Allah created us with this limitation. We have boundaries we cannot go beyond. Who knows anything of the unseen? Doesn't make any sense. When talking about Jannah and Nar, where is sense in something that you don't see? When talking about devils and angels, where is sense in something you can see you cannot see? It is submission. Ibn al Qayyim Rahmatullah said, anyone with any brain would know that what caused a lot of corruption on earth is given precedence to reason over religion. It ruined many people's faith. He said, if we cannot perceive the wisdom and reason behind it, then it is because of our shortage, our limitation, our limited ability with the wisdom of Allah. We are limited again with the wisdom of Allah. We have no right but to submit. Why? Because Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ It is not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they after that have a choice or opinion or a say in that affair. Abu Zinad, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, one of the great Tabi'een, said beautiful words regarding this matter. He said, the Sunnah should not be disputed or judged based on our opinions. Because if we do so, then not a single day would pass except that people would jump from one faith to another. And one conviction to the other. He said, rather, the Sunnah should be submitted to and adhered to, whether or not it is in conformity with our reason. If Islam was to be based on people's opinions, then we would have 1.7 billion Islams because every one of us would have his own perception of what this Sharia is or what this text is. That's why the solution is to submit. Salvation is in submission. Prosperity in this life and uh, eternal bliss in the hereafter are in full submission, are in giving precedence to Sharia and its texts over our reason and rationale. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم لا تعذبنا فإنك علينا قادر وارحمنا فإنك بنا راح